All right, Aries, welcome to your yearly 2016 Sidereal Astrology forecast. My name is Athen, and this is for Sidereal Astrology. If you are new to this channel, be sure to check the description down below because your sign might be different. All right, Aries, a transformative 2016, a lot of it involving the north and south nodes, which are about the life path. A lot of old energies being released along the life path and new beginnings taking place with that. Now the nodes are forming a T-square up to Saturn. So Saturn is grounding everything this year to make sure we are approaching it in a slow and steady way with uh, patience and hard work and discipline, which can make it very long lasting. So when we're open to working hard this year, it can be very grounding. It can actualize a lot of these things that are expanding, our dreams, our values, our pursuits in life are really getting this dose of expansion with Jupiter over the North Node, which I'll talk about. Uh, but it does take that hard work, patience and discipline to do so. And this year we can really lay that foundation. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Here's essentially 2016. And one element of it that's very interesting and, and very important to consider is that a lot of this energy all started here around the later part of 2015. So in October, we had that Jupiter squaring up to Saturn. All right, so there's that growth, that expansion. I'm gonna show you what this looks like in your natal chart. This year, we're gonna have Jupiter right off the bat, right, on, right in January, January, February. Jupiter conjoining up to the North Node. That's the growth, that's the expansion that I was talking about in regards to our life path. There's a lot of positive energy, there's a lot to be learned about moving forward this year okay and uh, good fortune you know for some of us a lot of this depends on our personal charts right that's the most important thing but collectively this is essentially the general energies now the north node shifting into your fifth house this year so there's a there, there was that emphasis the past couple years in regards to things pushing you towards self-improvement to diet to taking care of the daily activities perhaps which has been your north node in the sixth so now the north node this year right at the beginning shifts into your fifth to meet up with jupiter which has already been expanding this is the house of your self-expression this is the house of your creativity your passion your interest your hobbies which with jupiter there again depending on your personal chart you could have seen opportunities to expand on that level and at the very least you're learning a lot about what you're interested in so now the north node shifts in there for now the next couple years where you're going to have plenty of opportunities to keep growing and expanding in that direction because the north node is our life path it's that guiding star so it's a really good focal point for you uh all year long so with that though saturn's squaring up to that you know and that's the discipline that's the hard work and that's all coming from making sure that you are doing things that are really meaningful to you this is Saturn in that eighth house, right? And Saturn's going into a fucus right at the beginning of this year as well. So it's it's getting deeper about, you know, transformation, right? What are the things that we really value beyond the surface, under the surface? And it's, you know, it could be relating to your work, career, whatever it might be. But when you connect to things in that meaningful way, that's the first step. That's the foundation. That's the bottom of everything in which it's being built. So important to work with that and be willing to go deep and be willing to open up be willing to you know open up with yourself learn more about yourself heal and transform and even though it may not come across as very easy because it's a square and it's saturn uh it can be very very supportive for your growth in this direction towards that fifth house energy now with that as you can see it just so happens we have chiron conjoining up to the south node at the same time this year and then later in the year will be neptune which i'll talk about but here it's a lot of old energies relating to healing okay so old concepts of healing old ways of healing self and even old wounds generally speaking are going to be released this early part of the year specifically around for you i would imagine the spirituality right maybe your relationship with god healing your relationship with god or with the universe or with creation or however you see that so going with the flow has always been a very important energy for you, but it's been important with the South Node to not go to any extremes with it. You know, isolation, too much of that 12th house energy, and now there's a healing taking place so you can have a healthy connection to all that is. So when you're doing that, you're releasing, and you have that solid relationship with God, as, you know, as I'd call it, then you have more support, more insights, and more momentum to move towards these passions, these interests and things, which is the direction for you this year. And then there's Saturn as the focal point, making sure that's all grounded and real and not going to any extremes. 
So that's going to be, um, you know, right off the bat, we'll be feeling that. And again, it's a carryover from a lot of 2015. So thinking around August of last year, if there was anything that you um, were thinking about expanding on or working on or putting in hard work from those ideals and visions, that's going to continue. And then March will be an important month with that when we have those solar eclipses, which I'll talk about. Now, we do also have Jupiter trining up to Pluto. So if you're open to change, I mean, this is a fantastic year for this. You know, it's there's a lot of positive support for change. And for you, it's all changing the way you express yourself and you create and you have fun. You follow your interests, you follow your passions in life. A lot of support for that. There's that Jupiter posing up to Chiron, which we've been feeling since November. OK, that's been the healing in regards to our worldview and our outlook and our positivity in life. And then we get into Saturn squaring Neptune, which is going to be a very important transit this year. This is that uncertainty, that doubt, perhaps, in regards to what we're building, where we're headed for you, that eighth house. Right. And, you know, Neptune's been your 11th and your 11th is going to be highly activated. The 11th house is about groups. It's about networking or organizations. OK, or any types of visions or ideals that we might have. So it's been very idealistic for you in that regards over many years. So now this year, it's following those dreams, but working hard at it and also be willing to let any old visions or old extremes in regards to those ideals, you know, maybe putting things on a pedestal that are unhealthy that might be released. That's going to be more so later in the year, but it's an important consideration as Saturn is squaring up to Neptune pretty much all year long. So it's a year of actualizing those dreams in regards to that, but in a very realistic sense. It's very, very important. And it's about faith and trust. Know that everything in regards to organizations and groups and your ideals is unfolding in divine timing. Now, Jupiter is conjoining up to the North Node, like I said, right at the beginning on, you know, in January, February time period. And then um, in February, we have the eclipses, first set of eclipses. The first one is a solar eclipse. And that's going to be on March 8th. All right. And so solar eclipse hold the new moon energy. So new beginnings here and always very transformative. And this is going to be in regards to releasing those old energies relating to your 12th house, the over under extremes of alone time, of spirituality, of getting that R&R, &R, okay? finding that healing there and releasing the past in regards to these things. The more open you are to that, like I said, there's a lot of positive energy, but also this will be a culminating point for you later in the year in September. So through that space, through that clearing that you do have here, you'll have more space for new beginnings later on. It's very transformative and, and can create a trem tremendous amount of spiritual liberation and healing big time. Now, the lunar eclipse is on March 23rd, and that's going to be in Le uh, Virgo, Virgo, actually. So here there's, you know, where I was saying there's been the past two years of self-improvement, perhaps, or of health or of diet. More is culminating with that. So especially the past six months from March, so these last few months of 2015, if you've been working hard on anything relating to your work, relating to your crafts, your health, your diet, your routine, could be a culminating point for that. And it's a good time to really see that area of your life and see how you can shift that direction into those passions and interests, which is that fifth house. So that's March. March is a very transformative month in the astrology, right? And that's the same time Chiron goes into Pisces. So like I was saying, healing that, that connection, that relationship going to be highly emphasized. So then the middle part of the year has this kind of pivot point. And the pivot point is involving a lot of these aspects either culminating or going to their secondary positions, May, June time period. Uh, one of which is the culmination of any of those that hard work and discipline could be, you know, we're seeing that or it could culminate, especially if you've been working on anything since August. Okay, could call me with that Jupiter squaring up to Saturn. The other thing, too, is that Pluto's trying the North Node. So it's a very supportive time for those fifth house things for you. Okay, and it could be a big time for change there, maybe something new. You know, fifth house is also children. So for some of you who've been thinking about having children in your life, could be very powerful new beginnings with that. Uh, romantic for some of you. Fifth house is also romance and uh, anything creative or entrepreneurship even. Okay, so some things to consider because there's this pivot point and a shift here with uh, these planets, with these aspects, and Pluto trining the North Node. And there might still be uncertainty, right? Maybe regarding different areas of life, not so much the fifth house, maybe. So it's, again, very important to have faith and trust, but you're learning something about that faith and trust here around June, okay? And there's that Jupiter trining Pluto, okay? So culmination of, of sorts. 
So that's that shifting point. And then uh, with those second, those second eclipses here in September, September 1st, we've got um, this uh, solar eclipse in Leo. All right, so here's where we have a lot of these new beginnings now really shaping up uh, in regards to your self-expression, all right, in regards to your um, creativity, right? So that's going to be an opening and a gateway. And again, it's going to be through that hard work, you know, hard work and discipline, which is Saturn. And again, the south node is going to be conjoining up to Neptune very close around this time. All right, so old belief systems about spirituality, about extremes with alone time. All right, about you know dreams that are you know ungrounded. You know it's very it's a very important year to stay very very grounded, right? And this is all healthy because as a result, it's going to be that much more space for you to move into these interests. You know this is about moving into what you're really passionate about and seeing how your interests can be of help to others to those organizations. But the focal point and your focus is on that fifth house, and that's the area in which it can certainly happen. Then on September 16th, we have the lunar eclipse in Pisces, so that culminating point of that transformation and healing of spirituality that I was talking about since the earlier part of the year in March, okay, could be a culminating point with that. And if we look back at the transits, I want to show you too that um, this is a very interesting time because a lot of planets start to make completely different aspects here in December at the end of this year. And they're very liberating. Saturn trining Uranus. Uranus trining the North Node. Jupiter opposite Uranus, which comes across as very expansive. It, so, and Jupiter squaring Pluto. So there's a lot of more of the liberating energies, whereas this year coming up is much more of that Saturnian nature. right? Now Jupiter's there expanding it, so there's a lot of optimism, a lot of possibilities. And we can really actualize them, but with Saturn, T-square, hard work, patience, discipline. That's the big key. So that's the shifting point there with that. Okay. All right, Aries. So I hope you guys have a fantastic 2016. I want to thank you all very much for all of your support, for liking, sharing, commenting, getting readings, etc. It's been tremendously helpful. And if you guys ever have any questions, I'm always here. All right. Have a good one. See you guys all next time.